Okay, when ideally when you sharpen your blade, you have your metal there. You have two points. Okay. You sharpen here, you sharpen there, and you get a good edge. That's the ideal way to do it. But that's not how the machine was designed, okay? The machine like this blade, like this blade over here. As you can see, the blade is shaped and sharpened only on one side. It's this one and then the angle. Okay? So, well now the critical part here is the angle. Let me show you what I mean. This is the, the blade, okay? If you sharpen it this way, okay, you do get a very sharp edge, but it's not very sturdy. As soon as the edge of the blade breaks, then you have to resharpen. And this one, the leather is strong enough to break your tip. As soon as your tip breaks, because you're, ang you're angled very, very steep, okay, instead of having a sharp blade, that's going to snap then you have to resharpen the whole thing. So this angle, which is a steep angle, is not good. Now the other angle is the blunt angle. And you sharpen it that way. Okay? If it's so blunt, that's not gonna cut anything. Because this is your sharp point. It's not gonna cut anything at all. So you have to find an ideal angle. The ideal angle is probably about less than 45 degrees but this one you don't have much control over this angle because this is going to be determined by well imagine this to be the sharpening stone inside the equipment so this angle is basically determined by the sharpening stone how does it work okay you have a fixed blade <clears throat> we don't need this anymore okay you have your blade that turns the control of this blade is sidewards left to right there's a knob that controls this blade and it turns now this is your sharpening stone the sharpening stone is adjusted front and back okay now, if your sharpening stone is over here, and then you, it, it moves front and back to get to the blade. Now, if your sharpening stone is over here, it hits this part of the blade. You're not sharpening anything. You're just ruining your equipment. Now, if your sharpening stone is over here, okay, what happens? If your sharpening stone is over here, you get a long cut. You get a very long cut, okay? And this thing's gonna snap. It's not good. So, that this, if this is your sharpening stone, this thing turns, right? And this thing turns also at the same time. You know, you can move this. When you adjust one knob, it's going to hit the blade and you start sharpening. But you don't want to hit it right here. You don't want to hit it right there. You want to hit the blade right there. So, it's sharpening this way. Again. Okay, it's turning this way, but this is turning that way. Don't hit it here. Don't hit it there. Now, what is the so where to hit it? Where, where is it well, supposed to just about right there? Meet. Okay, now there's a critical factor here because this is your center is point. Is the stone round? Yeah, yeah, but this is your center point, right? Ideally, if your blade is right at the center point, I mean, if the sharpening stone is right at the center point, then you got a nice, perfect angle right there. Now, we have a second-hand equipment. It's changed hands so many times we've taken, up, taken it apart. And my sharpening stone is slightly higher than that of center. It's located here. Which means, what does that mean? Since my sharpening stone is not located at the center of the blade, but a few centimeters higher, okay? My blade, my blade is no longer shaped this way that's not the shape of my blade okay and it turns my blade is shaped this way already 
it's shaped this way because it is located it is located a few centimeters above dead of center so that's where it's located see here you get the 90 degree sharpening stone but since my blade is located a few centimeters higher my blade is now shaped this way and this is what I have to adjust now to adjust okay I don't suggest moving the blade which is the first knob on the left you see it later why because this is just way too sensitive I suggest you pull back your you pull I mean the sharpen you pull back your blade adjust the sharpening stone and then move the blade little by little now if you press on this too hard you're not gonna sharpen anything really you're just gonna use up your blade eat up your blade and you're going to get a very big spur spur meaning yeah you know, I think they understand your, the, the spur. spurs in the back that means you just broke the tip of your blade you get too much spur that means you're breaking your blade and that's not very good though you can't help it the idea is to minimize it so the way to do it is as soon as the adjustment of the left and right of this has been determined okay don't use the sharpening stone to hit the blade okay you adjust your you adjust your sharpening stone you move out your blade adjust the sharpening stone and then push the blade little by little Got it. that's the way to sharpen it because the adjustment of this one is just way too sensitive this one you have a greater leeway in adjusting well now what i do I usually mark this with the pencil pen, right? So I can see exactly where the sharpening stone is hitting the blade. And I'd like to hit it at that point wherein the entire the entire angle is touching the sharpening stone. You put pencil pen here, okay? And then you mean a sharpie or anything. But the minute it touches your sharpening stone, if you just take out that part of that pencil pen mark, that means your angle's no good. You gotta get it at the angle wherein, at the time when the blade hits the sharpening stone, you erase your pencil pen marks, meaning it's just about right at that angle. Not here, not there, but dead center. Okay. That's it. Got it. And then you check if it's sharp. If it's sharp already, then you're good to go. So, lecture part is over? Yeah, now we go to the machine. Okay. Let's see how it works.